this, uh, this got tolerance of uh, plus or minus eight microns on these diameters here. Um, and I think this diameter here is plus five microns. And Those are it. pretty tight tolerances. Yeah, yeah, and we do hold it as well. And also, how do you automate these? How easy are these to automate? Oh, great, yeah, bar feed. So uh, depending on the size of the bar, uh, we've got extensions as well, so for the bigger bar we can put extensions on overnight and they just run. Yeah, the biggest problem is getting this walk away. And then you can fit two, four, six, eight parts just on this side. Eight times four is not 24. 24. 24. Six, four, yeah. six, yeah, six, four, uh, yeah. yeah. I think I said Something 20 like that. Our six, four, six, four, 28. Okay, I, I don't we'll know. Anyway, whatever. Um, We're here today in Droitwich at LMS Precision Engineering and you are going to have a wicked 10 minute tour, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. So at LMS Precision, we found that really they specialise in speed and automation. That's what they're interested in. So we're going to be talking about that a little bit later. First of all, look at the material racks. Now, I'm very impressed with the engineering management that goes on here at LMS. Lots. Look at how nice that is. There's no stuff around. There's no stuff lying around. It's all cable tied. It's all labelled lovely materials. Well, Roger, who is the managing director here, said that uh, materials at the moment, the availability and also time, what they can get and price points are quite difficult. So we'd just like to give a plug to Interco, our sponsors as well, who hold a lot of stock here in Cheltenham. Anyway, we'll move on from that one. So let's begin with the first machine, which is this horizontal from Matsura. So this Matsura has six pallets. 240 tools in the back and I'm amazed by the envelope of this machine. Whoa, that's the spindles moving around there. <laughs> I'm amazed by the envelope of this machine compared to six pallets, 240 tools. You never get a machine this small. And it's also 20 years old. It's been running day in, day out for 20 years. And you said, is it still singing? And he said, absolutely, yes. Um, what is it? It's, is it 26 parts he can present to the spindle at any one time? Yeah, is so if you right? have a quick, oh, let's move this pallet around. So you have a quick look here. This is a custom fixture base they've machined. Put, I think these are called Mighty Bites, these little taper clamps. Other options are available. They buy these little things off the shelf, design this in your CAD CAM system or even by hand, and then you can fit two, four, six, eight parts just on this side. Eight times four is not 24. 24. 24. Six, four, six, yeah, yeah six, four is 24. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think I said Something 26. Like that. Well, our six, four, is great. six, four is 28. I don't, I, I don't know. We'll anyway, whatever. Um, I know he's a big fan <laughs> of uh, Lang as well, and he. What he also likes, he watches our MTD CNC videos, and what he said, he goes, I like the machine videos, he said, but it's the ancillary equipment to see how people are machining quicker and faster is what kind of floats his boat. So, first of all, custom fixturing, and then just right next to it, we've got some brand new Lang Zero Point with some new vices on. So, they're still investing, as well as making their own fixturing as well. There's, there's a lot of interesting uh, milling strategies just on these six pallets, on this one machine. We've got some amazing parts to show you, but before you see those, I'm going to hide, you can't see them yet. We've also got the Matsura. He believes, uh, well actually most of his machines here are Matsura machines, so he believes in their quality. Exactly, so Matsura, he's got a four axis Matsura here, he's also got a VMC here with a nick and rotary table for extra four axis work, maybe cylindrical work, maybe cylindrical etching or some slots going around. They've also got my favourite, a nick and height presetter. <laughs> now I've used favorite? these, yeah, uh, I've, well it's my favourite because I used to work there and um, this is fantastic for setting your tools on a machine bed, uh, without having to use fag paper, it's a hell of a lot more accurate. But if you do want to start setting your tools off a machine, you can buy a presetter from Nikon. You don't then need this kind of slightly older technology. So just a nice little plug, plug there. Nice plug there. And right. Again, just look at look at how tidy these, these, um, this table is. I mean, they've got carbide tools from small to big, high speed, uh, high speed steel tools. I just love how it's clean, it's tidy. These guys know what they're doing. Perfect. Right. Let's talk about parts. This is a really interesting part as so well. So this is oh, this is the thir this is the first ever 32 color. Uh, the threading spool to, for making carpets. It is, yes, so, 32. And uh, they, I think this is a big customer to them actually. Yeah, originally. so this, yeah, so they have, uh, this is, uh, I mean, if you look at the complexity of this part, they made this out of aluminium uh, and they tabbed it, so they made it in, in one piece and they could use the, they could um, wrench it off the tabs and then you just deburr a few little, few little points and then you get that part straight off. I mean, look at it, if you actually, you probably can't zoom in there, but there's a tiny little hole in there. 32 of those all the way around. What a nightmare to inspect. 
Wow, okay, absolutely. Right, some other parts as well. I think you said you were quite impressed by this one here. Yeah, Rowan. so I love this because if you have a little look, you've got the O-ring groove around. I assume this is a face seal, it's got maybe fluid or some air or liquid moving through it. Even the the, uh, the quality of the finish on this on this O-ring group is absolutely lovely and it's a cool little part. It looks like a starfish. It does, Sweet. right. Tw uh, on this machine as well, just going back to the Matsura, 24 faces at a time, he said, six pallets. But what really excites him is his 240 tools on this. So he said there's basically parts going on that table, hitting the uh, spindle constantly running, and that adds to that reoccurring theme of speed and automation. Exactly. Next up, sliding head machines. Right, Brilliant. let's head down here. So sliding heads is automation for turning rather than milling. So obviously a lot of folks on automation regardless of the operations that they're doing and the kind of parts that they're making. So we've got two sliding heads from Star here, both with long bar feeders, and we've got Scott. Yes, I've just grabbed him for you. Go on then. So, hello Scott, how are you doing? Yeah, not bad, thank you. Yourself? Not yeah, fantastic. So, how long have you been running the sliding heads at LMS? Um, about 10 years now. Brilliant. So, obviously, you guys, you've been running these for quite a long time, yep. and I've seen you operating them. You certainly know your stuff. Yep. Can you just explain what you find the, uh, to be the best part of running a sliding head, what you like about them? Um, holding tolerances, definitely, uh, and unmanned running. Because you're machining right close to the guide bush, uh, you can control the tolerances much better. Could you explain the tolerances on some of these parts you got, please? Yeah, I mean, this one here especially. Um, this uh, this got tolerance of uh, plus or minus eight microns on these diameters here, um, and I think this diameter here is plus five microns. And Those are pretty it. tight tolerances. Yeah, yeah, and we do hold it as well. Yeah. Brilliant. So, as well as precision and accuracy, yeah. you've got you've got rigidity, yeah. and also how do you automate these? How easy are these to automate? Oh, great. Yeah, bar feed. So, uh, depending on the size of the bar, uh, we've got extensions as well. So, for the bigger bar, we can put extensions on overnight, and they just run. Yeah. The biggest problem is getting the swarf away. Biggest problem is getting the swarf away. That's a good problem to have. Yeah. One more thing as well, precision automation. You also mentioned they're actually really rigid. So, what kind of depths of cut are you taking on these? Uh, we can take uh, five mil a side. So, down twenty mil three one six down to ten mil in one go, no problem. Twenty mil down to ten mil in one pass. That is incredible. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Scott, what do you like about working here at LMS Precision Engineering? Everything. I love it. I love it. I love the challenges every day. Um, you know, there's, there's no day's uh, the same as the other. You're constantly learning, and if you're willing to learn, then it's a good battle. So. And what do you think you do differently to others, or what do you think you do well? Um, I think we do uh, repeating, re repetitive parts, so repeat work. So we, we're constantly striving to get the parts more cost effective for the customer, so um, get them off in a quicker time, more accurately. Um, yeah. Can't basically. do better than that. No, and that's why you've got investment in automation in turning, milling, yeah. sliding head, fixed head. Yeah, that's it. Thanks, Scott. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. There's some Thank parts you, here as well. So if you just want to have a little look, because Scott has kindly laid out uh, lots of some of the parts that he's making on so the I sliding head. So I find the, the size of parts and sliding head machining absolutely amazing. These tiny little parts. It's almost like watchmaking parts. Yeah, They're well, so that's tiny. where it all started, isn't it? Um, OK, so next up is some of their latest machines that they've invested in. Speed automation. What I really, really like about these, and maybe not everybody knows enough about Muratech machines, again, they are from Matsura, but you're bar feeding in, you're also gantry loading in, so really what he's doing is future-proofing the sizes and the capacity of parts that he can put through a machine like this. Exactly, and quite a lot of people would maybe will spend a lot of money on the machine, on the bar feeder, but they think about the consumables and the accessories last. They don't think about tooling, they don't think about uh, how they're going to hold their work. Now, what they've got is uh, a set of collets, which are uh, produced by Heimbuck, and these have special quick change. Can we oh, open, the can we open the door? We don't know if it's running. Yeah, yeah we can open the door. So they have a quick it. change adapter, so the guys can get in, a, a single tool in when there's not clamping apart, take the collet out, put a new collet in, in a matter of seconds. Wow. So if you spend all this money on this fantastic technology, there is no point spending five minutes changing over a chuck. You, can, you need those accessories to help make sure your, that machine's running as much as possible. And they didn't just go for one, they went for two of these, and they've also gone for another gantry as well, again, just opening up their capacity. Yeah, exactly. So bar feeding, obviously, if you've got big bars, so if you've got little parts, round parts, uh, you can make them out of bar. If you've got bigger diameters, you need that gantry loader system. There's no two ways about it. But also, it's all about operator intervention, and what they've done on both of these Neurotech machines is, Bar loading, gantry, but then the finished part, if you're bar loading, comes off on the Hydrofeed rotor app, which we are seeing more and more of um, out there in the industry. Yeah, so Basically, these... they can leave it. They can yeah. leave it to run overnight, 
Perfect. Parts so, up. really cost effective solutions to making sure your parts don't get dinted when they get taken by the parts catcher. Absolutely. So, uh, an amazing company here. I'm looking around for Roger and I'm hoping I might be able to grab him because Roger has been so welcoming to us, hasn't he? And he's made us an awful lot of teas and coffees and the food van has been round and he's uh, been very kind and uh, got us all lunch. He has, he? yeah, very kindly. He got you a bag of, bag of cookies which you very okay. kindly shared with us as well. Well, if you can show the audience some of the older machines and I'll go get Roger. Let's have a quick look at the older machines. So they've got a really old Takisawa TC1, which I don't know if this was the first turn it lathe that Takisawa ever made, but it certainly looks like it might be. I and mean, if you look at the, the control, it's got a CRT screen. Look at the, they've got bars on the, on the guideways. I mean, look at look inside that. I mean, the, obviously they put a new chuck on, new, new um, soft jaws, trying to make sure that they maintain these old, old bits of kit. And it's just so nice to see old lays next to these absolutely fantastic new pieces of equipment, just working alongside each other. Uh, 1987, so it's the year I was born. Perfect, you see, a good, a good, um which one looks older? A good vintage. <laughs> a good vintage. Thanks for that, Roger. Uh, still going strong. Both. Both of it. Both of you. Yeah. You for longer, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Yeah. But it still does a good job. It's uh, not a machine that we use every day, constantly. Usually someone's running it who's run, running something else as well. And um, so we just can't, uh, we can't justify changing it, you know. It's not the quickest machine in the world, but it just keeps going. Nice and accurate. <laughs> Like me. Right, um, Roger, I've just complimented you. You bought us lunch, you've been really welcoming to us. Um, and a lot of reps have actually commented on some of the posts that we put online about your reputation of being so kind. So really, you've got a bit of a name in the industry. So what is it that you believe that you've done well running this machine shop um, and well for your customers, but also uh, sales guys that come around? Well, I think, you know, just try and be nice to everybody and uh, certainly for the customers, do what you say you're gonna do. No. you enjoy it? Yeah, I do still enjoy it. Yeah, I enjoy giving the customer what he wants. And if we do something wrong in here, find it in here, don't let the customer know. If we have to work all night to put it right so the customer gets his job on time, that gives me a buzz. Perfect. And what's changed? It's my last question. But what's changed over the years from when you started to where you are now? We can't get the materials anymore. <laughs> But, uh, well, certainly the technology's moved on, hasn't it? And then, you know, if you're still doing the job the same way you were 20 years ago, you're probably doing it wrong because the tooling has advanced so much, and, you know, which is why I like watching the um, MTD shows. And uh, more importantly for us, not for the machines, we're, we're very happy with what we buy, but the tooling and ancillary equipment, you know, it's just improving all the while and developing. So great shows. Keep it up, guys. Brilliant, there we go. I didn't even tell you to say that though. That's amazing. And also I've told them about what you said earlier, so it shows I listen to you. Uh, thank you, Rowan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roger, for having us uh, here today. What a machine shop, LMS Precision Engineering based in Droitwich.